Hey guys, welcome back. As mentioned in the previous session, today we will be discussing about networking in VirtualBox. Now I think this is an important topic because most of you would probably get stuck here if you don't do it right. I know it's a little off course, however the things that are covered in this session is good to know information not just for Hadoop lab but for any lab that you want to set up using VirtualBox. Let us start by first understanding my home network setup. Now at my home, my internet connection is provided by an ISP which terminates on my home Wi-Fi router. The Wi-Fi router then acts as my gateway which creates an internal LAN network for my home. My Wi-Fi router is configured to use the IP range 192.168.10 slash 24 subnet for the internal LAN network. All my connected devices including my PC get their IP configuration from the router via DHCP. The Wi-Fi router which is also my gateway to the ISP WAN and a DHCP server for my internal home network has an internal IP of 192.168.10.1. Similarly, my PC has got an IP of 10.2 and so on. Note that this IP range is for the internal home network and is not the same as the external IP provided by the ISP that terminates on the Wi-Fi router. So this is a general and commonly found home network setup. And I'm sure most of you would be having somewhat similar setup at home. Now setting up network on virtual machines is quite different than setting it up on your PC or server having physical ports. In case of virtual machines, the networking layer is virtualized. And hence in this session, I'll be giving a brief overview of how VirtualBox handles networking. Now for 90% of the cases, the default VirtualBox settings are more than sufficient for normal VM operations. However, since our requirement includes setting up a cluster, the default settings won't be sufficient. In VirtualBox, each VM that you create can have a total of 8 virtual network adapters. You can configure the first 4 network adapters from the application interface under settings and then network. The other 4 interfaces can be added via the command line using VBox Manage. On a side note, VirtualBox provides a command line management tool called VBox Manage, which is basically an exe file stored under the VirtualBox installation folder. You can invoke the tool from the Windows command line. However, this is for advanced users and hence I won't be covering it in this video. The graphical interface itself is more than sufficient for our requirement. Now under advanced options, you can see the various virtual adapter types that you can choose from. These are basically the hardware types supported and virtualized by VirtualBox. Choosing one usually depends upon the compatibility with your host OS and your requirements. For all practical purposes, you can just leave it with the default one. Also, you can see VirtualBox selects the NAT mode by default. Now it is time for me to explain the different kinds of networking modes in a little more detail. VirtualBox supports various networking modes. The list includes NAT or Network Address Translation, NAT Network, Bridged Adapter, Internal Network and Host Only Adapter. There is also Generic Driver which is rarely used and hence I will be skipping that. NAT or Network Address Translation is the default selection for all VirtualBox network adapters. Now if you have any experience with networking before, you should be knowing that network address translation is a well-known concept in networking. Well in NAT mode, VirtualBox shields the VM behind the host IP. The VM connects to the external world by translating its IP to the host IP using it as a proxy. Now when you configure your VMs to use NAT, VirtualBox basically creates a sort of internal network for each VM. It will then map the source IPs of the VMs to the host IP using the VirtualBox NAT engine whenever the VM needs to contact the outside world. Now let me launch my VM using a NAT adapter. To select NAT adapter, go to network under the VM settings and select the networking mode. As you can see, NAT is selected by default. Let me launch the VM now.
my VM is launched. So let me check the IP address that is assigned. You can use the command if config. Now this is the interface that is configured for the NAT. And as you can see, it is assigned an IP of 10.0.2.15, which is different from my home network that starts with 192.168.10. This is the internal network created by VirtualBox for the VM. The gateway IP is nothing but the VirtualBox NAT engine, which somewhat acts like a virtualized router. This means whenever the VM tries to connect to an outside network resource, the NAT engine on VirtualBox will translate the source IP address on the packets to the host IP which looks as if the host itself is connecting to it. The VM now looks just like any other web application on the host machine. For multiple VMs, VirtualBox will create separate internal NAT networks. In this mode, the VM is shielded and cannot be accessed from the outside world, from the host or even from other VMs. However, the VM can access the outside network using the host as proxy. Here, you can see that the internet is accessible from my VM. However, when I try to ping my VM IP from the host, it is not accessible. Now, VirtualBox does provide a way to access VMs behind NAT, either from the host or from external network. For this, we must use something called as port forwarding, again a well-known concept in networking. Now you can create port forwarding rules which tells the VirtualBox NAT engine running on the host that whenever the host adapter receives packet on a predefined port number, it has to forward that packet to the VM by reverse translating its IP and port number. To create a port forwarding rule for a VM, go to network under the VM settings. Now with NAT selected, go to advanced settings. Here you will see the option to set port forwarding rules. Now I am going to create a rule for allowing SSH connections to my VM. To do this, select add a new rule. Now in the host port, put a user port number that you want to be forwarded to the VM. I will enter a random port number 2281. However, make sure that no other servers on the host is using this port since it will create conflicts. Leave the host IP blank which means it will accept connection from all IPs. Second, on the guest port, put port number 22 which is for SSH and click OK. Let me launch my VM now. Now that the VM is up, let me make sure that the SSH service is up on the VM and it is listening on port 22. Well, this confirms SSS service is up and running on the VM. Let's give it a try. Open your PuDY terminal on your host. Select SSH and enter the port number as 2281. Enter the local host IP that is 127.0.0.1 since I am accessing the VM from the host itself. If you are trying to access the VM from an outside network, enter the host IP instead which in my case is 192.168.10.2. And here you go. We can access the VM over SSH. Let me log in to confirm that it is the same machine. If config and there it is. You can see that the IP assigned is 10.0.2.15, which is that of our VM. Now the host and other external resources can access the VM by sending packets to the host IP on the port number 2281 that we configured. The NAT engine will capture all the packets on this port number and will forward it to the VM on port 22. Now remember, pings still won't work since ICMP is a level 3 protocol and does not have a port number like SSH. 
So that's all about NAT and port forwarding. You can use port forwarding to set up web and other servers sitting behind NAT. The second mode is the NAT network. This is very similar to the previous one. However, here it allows you to create an internal NAT network with other VMs in it. All the VMs in the same NAT network will be able to talk with each other. But the way they access the outside world will be the same that is using network address translation. Now to assign a NAT network to a VM, you need to first create the network. Go to Files, Preferences and then select Network. Here you will see all the NAT networks created, which in my case is none. So I'll go ahead and create one. There you go. A new NAT network is created. You can name it whatever you want and also configure its IP ranges and DHCP settings. Now go to the VM and select settings. Go to network and select NAT network in the networking modes. Here you will be able to choose the NAT network you want the VM to be part of. You can see the network that we just created. Similarly, you can create multiple NAT networks that your VMs can be part of. Now bridge network takes a very different approach. In case of bridge adapters, VirtualBox uses the net filter driver on your host to directly intercept data packets from your physical network port. This effectively creates a new virtualized network interface along with your host network interface. This enables the VMs to directly communicate with the host and even take part in routing and bridging with the rest of your network. To enable bridge networking, select the VM and go to network under the VM settings. Here, select bridge adapter in the networking mode and launch the VM. Now that our VM is up, let me check the IP address assigned to it. I'll use the same if config command. As you can see, the VM has an IP 192.168.10.3 which is the same as my internal home network. Similarly, my host has an IP 192.168.10.2. Hence, you can see that the VM has directly connected to my home network as if it were a separate interface. From outside, it will look as if two separate hosts have connected to the network. Every new VM I add in this mode will connect to the network as a new host. I can also configure static IP on my VM. However, I have to make sure that it falls under the IP range of my home network configured on my Wi-Fi router and that no other device in the network uses the same IP. I must also then manually configure DNS on the VM whose details we will see in the next session. With bridge adapters, you can access the VM over the network from other VMs in the network and from your host. Now bridge adapters are suitable for our Hadoop lab setup as it will allow us to create multiple VMs with static IPs that can talk to each other, can connect to the internet and can be accessed from the host. However, be careful while connecting your host to office or other networks while the VMs are on in this mode. You should be aware that the VMs will have direct access to the network and any unwanted services running on them can lead to network disruptions. Also, bridge adapters won't be suitable for our lab if you are using direct wired internet connection from ISP or dongles. This is because you will have limited or no control over the IPs assigned to you from ISP. You can only use DHCP IP assignment in such cases, which won't work out if you want to set up a Hadoop cluster with static IPs. This mode can be used to create internal virtual box networks where VMs can talk to each other internally. By default, all VMs in this mode will be part of the internal network INET. However, you can specify a new name to create a new network. In this mode, the VMs cannot access or be accessed from the outside network or even from the host. Now the host only mode allows you to create an internal network with the host being part of it. Now this is very similar to the previous mode that we discussed. However, in this case, in addition to creating an internal network, it also allows connection to the host. 
In this mode, VirtualBox specifically creates a new network adapter for the host using which the host can connect to the internal VirtualBox host-only network. Again, as with other modes, you can create multiple host-only networks. As you can see under File Preferences Network, there is a section for host-only networks. By default, we have one host-only network created. Now, if I right-click and go to Edit, here you can configure the adapter IP and the network IP ranges in DHCP. Currently, it is configured to use the Class C IP range 192.168.56 and we will leave it to that. You can also create more such networks if you want. Now on my Windows 7 host machine, if I go to Network and Sharing Center and select Change Adapter Settings, here you can see the host only adapter created by VirtualBox on my host for the network which I just showed you. Remember, if you create a new host only network on VirtualBox, a new network adapter will be created here. If you right click, go to properties and check its IPv4 settings, you will see it has the same IP which we saw in VirtualBox host only network adapter properties. Now your host will use this virtual adapter to talk with your VMs in your host-only network LAN. In host-only network mode, the VMs can talk to each other and with the host. However, the VMs cannot connect to any outside network or the internet. Let me quickly show you how to configure the host-only mode on my VM. Go to VM settings and select network. Now change the mode to host-only. Here you can select the host only network that you want the VM to be part of. Let's boot up the machine. Now by default my VM is configured for DHCP and will get an automatic IP from the DHCP server built into VirtualBox. Now let us check the IP using ifconfig. As you can see the IP assigned is 192.168.56.101 which is in the same IP range of our host only network. As you can see here, internet is not accessible on my VM in this mode. However, on my host machine, if I open the command prompt and ping the VM IP, you can see that it is reachable. Now the concepts that we learned today can be easily applied to other hypervisors as well, like the VMware workstation with slight changes here and there. You can refer this link if you want to read more on this topic, which I'll include in the description below. Now that we have seen the basics of VirtualBox networking, we will next see how to configure static IPs and other network configurations on a CentOS 7 system. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time.